Hey everyone, Johnny Boy here, and welcome back to the Subnautica Beginner's Guide. In today's episode, we're going to be going over the ins and outs of base building. This means thinking about the ideal base location, setting up your base so it's functional, making a good replenishable power source, as well as making your very own garden, both indoor and out. So with all that settled, let's get started. Hello from the future of this episode. As you can see, I'm doing this because I probably forgot to mention something. And the thing that I forgot to mention was that I forgot to tell you guys how to build a habitat builder. You need a wiring kit, a computer chip, and a battery. How to build a computer chip is you're going to need two table coral, a gold, and a copper wire. And how to make copper wire is you need two copper ore. Now that's pretty straightforward. Wiring kit, it's also straightforward. Just two silver ore. You can get silver from sandstone. Once you have that in the Habitat Builder, you can get started. Now back to whatever I was doing earlier. Now, I know the idea of being able to build a base basically anywhere you want is pretty appealing, but you should honestly keep some things in mind before you lay down the groundwork. I have a list of things that I like to think about whenever I'm making my base, so I'll share it with you. The first thing I like to think about is, does it have good resources near it? Like limestone, or sandstone, or shale outcrop, stuff like that you, that you can easily gather. Just stuff like that. The second thing you should think of is, what's around you? Like say, is there a creep cluster vine forest? Is there a, uh, a bunch of plentiful fish that you can grab in case you run out of food? Stuff like that. The third thing you should think about is, is there good flat ground that you can build your base at at the location you're wanting? Flat ground is actually kind of important for this kind of thing because if you don't build on flat ground, it kind of damages the hull more. And if the hull goes below zero HP, then your base actually starts to take damage and has holes in it, which is, as you can imagine, pretty bad for your living situation. The fourth and final thing you should think of is that, is it easy for you to go deeper from the base that you built? Now, the object of this game is to go deeper. And yes, that is pretty important when you're thinking about if you want to make a permanent base or not. So with all that in mind, let me show you where I built my base. Right down here at the mountain. Now using the list I mentioned to you guys earlier, I'm going to go over why exactly I chose this place as my base of operations. Number one was, is there any good resources near it? Yes, there is. There's sandstone, limestone, and shale outcrop. And if I go just a little bit deeper, I can get some gel sacks and rubies, which is pretty useful for some things we're going to be building a little bit later. Second thing on the list, what's around me? Well, as I said, there's the floating islands, which has the chance to have gel sacks and rubies, and below that is another good place. And just to my left is the creepvine cluster forest. I can go gather some more of that stuff if I ever need it, but I don't, and I'll tell you why later. The third thing is, is it flat ground? Yes, there is lots of flat ground I can work on here so I can expand my base indefinitely. And the fourth thing, can I get deeper easier from this location? Well, see, if I have a vehicle like the uh, prawn suit, uh, I can get out pretty easily, but I might not be able to climb back up pretty easily. So that's one thing you should keep in mind. I mean, I could scale, but it might be a little bit difficult. There is a grappling hook, uh, arm piece for the prawn later, but we don't have the schematics for that right now, so that's pretty much out of the question until we find it. Now that I've gone over why I built the base here, let's talk about what I built inside of the base. The things that you're going to be needing in order to survive. Let me just park my vehicle and go inside. As you can see, I got things pretty much well set up over here. There's the power source. Let's see if it's still full. Yep, still full. I have two, actually. Let's see if this one's full. Ah, it's not, so I can show you what you need to do. So, I have two planters. This one is for food, and this one is for power purposes. So, I have these Chinese potatoes. I just take one, two, three, and I go over to the bio generator, reactor, whatever, and I right click to put these in there, and that charges this thing very fast. Although it kind of does run out semi-quickly, the lantern fruits actually last a while, but I think the trade-off is that it takes just a little bit longer for it to fully charge to 
what is it again? Bioreactor. Yeah. It just takes a little bit longer to charge that up, but once it's at full power, it's fine. Now, about the other planter, the one that I made all this food for. As you can see, lots of food. Now let me show you what you can do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I take out one, two, three, and then I take out my knife, and I cut a fourth. And I cut a fourth. And I cut a fourth. Thank you. So now that I cut the fourth one, it gives me four seeds. One, two, three, four. Now the planter box is full again. It has eight seeds and eight fully grown melons. Now I just eat these. One, two, three. And I'm pretty well off. So you can just gather one, two, three, and then cut the fourth one every time. And then you'll be fine. And then you'll be fine. I swear. I swear. Thank you. <laughs> this is going to be the death of me, I swear. Now, let me show you what you need to do in order to exploit this. We just planted those things, right? Well, here's our bed over here. So if I walk to it, I click on it, and I go to sleep. I can walk right back over to my vegetable garden and... They may not be fully grown, but they're pretty grown pretty fast. Let me see how quickly they've grown. Do, do, do. Yeah, see, half of them were already fully grown. There's just four left. So, that's basically what you need to do in order to make a replenishable food source. It's easy, it's quick, and, well, I went from, like, zero H2O to basically full. So, that tells you how useful that is. So, now that I showed you that, and I showed you the power situation, let's talk about your storage situation. Labeling is your friend. If you click on this little black box on here, you can edit the name. So, you know, just titanium. Ti <sighs> titanium. <laughs> there we go. One. Now, I'm going to tell you straight up, you should probably have two lockers dedicated to titanium. It's useful all the time. All the time. In fact, I just put some more in there right now. Here's quartz which is just full of quartz. Here's copper, which is full of copper and copper wire. As you can see, I've pretty much labeled everything except for this one. This one, it, it has organic material, but yeah, whatever, I'll just call it organic. This has silver and a couple of gold. I tried to name it silver and gold, but you have a character limit, uh, so I couldn't do that. I couldn't even name it silver in AU. And this one is just random garbage that I happened to find. Like rubies. I got lucky and found some rubies. I also got lucky and found the next thing I'm about to show you. Don't despair if you happen to build a place and you're not able to get every resource that you want. Like, say, for me. I wasn't able to build near the calm area, so I wasn't able to get, like, uh, acid mushrooms. And for battery building, that's kind of important. So... That's a bit of a problem. See, you can remedy that if you just gather a couple. And... You know, I should probably get the seam off in case I run out of air. And you make your very own outdoor garden. Yes, I made an outdoor garden because, well, I love gardening. See, what you do is, I'll just show you right now. Oh, forewarning. Don't stand too close to these things when you cut them. They're basically like the marble melons, like same process of thought. You go up, you cut them, and then you get four seeds. You plant those four seeds, and voila, replenishable resource. Now, let me try and show you what happens if you get a little bit too close when you're cutting these things. Let me get right up on it. Yeah, you actually take damage. Those things hurt. Not too much, but if you happen to cut up like four or five, it'll instantly kill you. Not like four or five in a row, all at once. I've learned that the hard way. Now, there are some things that you can't cut, like the table coral. Those are some things that I'm actually going to have to go back to the calm zone if I ever want. But, a good portion of the things you can cut up to get the seeds for. Some things you don't even have to cut up, like this, the uh... Creep cluster vines. You can just grab the seeds and plant them like that. I'll just grab two. Let's grab two, plant them over here. You may be wondering why I don't just plant a bunch in that box. Well, you see, the funny thing about that is, if you plant six in a box, 
it becomes a beacon of white light. Bright white light. Like, you're not going to be able to see anything around it. It's very annoying. So, think about that whenever you're making these boxes. Only plant about two. I'm pretty sure it's just these that do that, but... In my last playthrough, I made something similar to this base, but instead of having my garden cave, I put my garden in the center of my base, and I stacked six of those things in the middle. What ended up happening was, as soon as I went into my base, you see, this is a normal scenery. Imagine that, but all white. Pretty bad, right? That's why I will never do that again. Lesson learned. And hopefully you guys don't do it either. It's pretty bad. Now, another thing worth mentioning are these. These are gel sacks. This is used to make aerogel. If you have a ruby and one of these gel sacks, that's how you make it. Aerogel is used to make the water filtration thing, which is actually what I'm about to make right now. So let's go ahead and go into base and get that all set up. As I said, one gel sack and one ruby makes one aerogel. And now that we have that aerogel, let me just go ahead and make sure I have everything that I need. Interior piece, water filtration machine. Three titanium, one copper wire, and an aerogel. Easy enough, right? Let's just go ahead and get everything. Nope, not there. I labeled everything, why am I... Here we go. And three titanium. One, two, three. Now we can make it, right? Yep, okay. Now, let's think about where we should put this. Here's our bedroom, so... It makes sense to build it right here, right? Can't build it right there, can't build it right there, I can't build it right there, I can build it right here for some reason. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we have this... Oh, there's the base hole I was talking about. It's at a solid 9.8, which is... That's pretty okay. It's not that great, but... It's above zero, so... Who can complain? Let's see. Yeah. This thing is going to start pumping out water and salt now, which, I mean, we already have the fruits that we weren't exactly hurting on H2O, but it's nice to have just a constant supply of it in case I need to grow those things and I can't go to sleep. When you go to sleep in the bed, you actually have to wait a little bit before you're actually able to go back to sleep. I know, it's weird, right? Okay, so I showed you guys my garden, I showed you guys the inside of my base, I showed you the power units, and I showed you how to set up the indoor gardens. Next thing we should talk about is the scanner room. This is pretty cool. Let me show you just a little bit of what it can do. Uh, let's say... How about sandstone chunks? Now, it's gonna scan the area. And then let me know if there's any around here. I think I have to use the camera to look at it. But if I don't feel like using the camera, there's actually something we can do about it. If we go over to the special fabricator, it has upgrades for this room alone. There's the scan room range, there's the scan room speed, and there's this. The HUD chip. If you build this, it's actually put in right here. If you have that, it actually shows you where all the scanning stuff is. See, uh, let me see if I got this right. Yeah, here's our base, and here's some sandstone chunks around there. Now, I could remember that if I wanted to, but it'd be much nicer if I was able to see it physically, right? So why don't we go take care of that? Let's go see what we need. We need a computer chip and magnetite. Now, magnetite is one of those things that's easily overlooked if you aren't looking carefully for it. Thankfully, I happen to know exactly where we can get some magnetite easily. I say thankfully for the knowledge, not for where I actually have to go. Well, uh, it's the place where I happen to die. Not once, but twice. That's right, the jelly mushroom cave thing. So, here we go again. Well, here we are. Let's see how well this goes. Here we go. This is the magnetite I was talking about. As you can see, eh, a little bit easy to overlook if you're not looking carefully. But there should be plenty around here. Did I really just find three in a row? I did. See what I mean? Oh, mama! Oh, God! Oh, she's a big one! 
Now that I've nearly avoided death a couple of times, let's go ahead and go back to the base so we can build that ship. Ooh, our first water bottle. Whoa, take a look at that. 50 H2O from this thing. This is what makes this well worth it. Okay, now that I got all the materials we need, let's go ahead and make that HUD chip so I can show you how it works. And let's go ahead and upgrade the scanner room so we can find some stuff easier. Okay, you just go ahead and click the upgrade console and throw all these in. And now the scanning range should be much, much wider. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. That's way wider and we're able to get a very good idea of where all the stuff is. And as you can see, look at that, all those bleeps. I can physically go to those outside of the base. Let me just go ahead and run out of here. And look at that. It's still on my heads up display, even though I'm outside of the base. Now instead of sandstone, let's see if we could find something a little bit more useful. Let's see, there's magnetite, salt deposit, sandstone, titanium, uranium, fragments. Ooh, that's actually a pretty good idea. Let's see what we can find around here that are fragments. Now, it's not instantaneous, which is why there's a speed upgrade. However, it'll start to ping things up, and it looks like there's actually something right next to our base. Let's go see what that is. Now, that fragment that was just outside of our base was a piece of the Cyclops. The Cyclops is the last vehicle we're going to be making. It's a big old submarine that's able to go really deep into the ocean. Now that I've pretty much shown you everything for the basic base, it's about time to wrap things up here, but before I do, let me just go over some things really quickly. When you're getting ready to build a base, you're gonna need some water lockers. Let me just show you. As you can see, I brought two water lockers with me. I stuffed these both full of titanium and lead so I was able to make the groundwork for my base. After that, I went around and gathered some quartz so I could make this basic, uh, solar panel right here so I could breathe in my base and start working on things on the inside. After that, you need to make sure that you're able to build your fabricator. And to build your fabricator, you're going to need table coral, gold, and titanium. Now, I showed you all how to get all that stuff, but just in case you forgot, gold can be found in sandstone and shale outcrop, table coral is in the calm zone area, you just got to cut those one things, and titanium is, well, it's easy enough to find. Okay, so I've showed you guys how to prepare your base, how to organize yourself, how to set up a garden, how to set up a power unit, and how to make your own scanner room as well as make a heads up display that shows you useful things like sandstone chunks. Now, I'm actually going to make one more base episode, but that's going to be a little bit later. In the next episode, we're going to be exploring the Aurora, and I'm going to be showing you guys a fun little glitch inside of it. But before I go, if there's anything I neglected to mention in this episode about base building, let me know in the comments below and I will address it in the next episode. So, until next time, see you later.